Alrighty. Hope everybody is having a lovely evening. And uh, hi, Laura. Hi, Jezere. Hi, Shirley. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Laura. I already said Laura, but that's okay. <laughs> hi twice. Alrighty. So um, in tonight's Q&A session, we're going to kind of quickly talk about um, wood burning grass. And Lisa and Laura, yes, I am very excited about the grass tutorial as well for next week. Um, Saturday. Alrighty. So, um, to kind of get a feel for how to create realistic grass, let me go to here. Okay. So there's a couple different things that we have to talk about when it comes to grass. Um, number one is texture. The other one is shading. So I'll give you kind of a brief a snippet of texture and shading. Um, for this project right here, I'm going to be using the razor tip. This is just the, the spoon shader. Hi, Larry. So it's, it's really a very common point. I have the temperature set at about eight and we're going to give you just kind of an example of texture in grass. So texture is going to be like even if I turn this thing upside down, that'll give you kind of a, a good idea. So texture is just those lines that we have that come up from the grass. Now, personally for me, I don't like to draw grass or burn grass like this. Uh, very straightforward, very almost kind of manicured, a little bit too perfect. So when I'm trying to burn grass, I do clumps and we'll get into that here in a minute, but you can see that this is, this is all texture right here. We just have lots and lots of harsh lines. Okay. So there's your texture. And now if I rock this back over and I'm using this softer kind of the, the, the bowl shaped side, this is going to be texture through and through. So if I create those same strokes, like this. Now we pretty much just have mostly shading, a little bit of texture, but a lot of shading. And same thing. If you burn grass in a very consistent manner like this with just shading, uh, it's a little bit better than the other side, but not quite so much. So what we need to do is blend the two and create both texture and shading. So, a lot of times uh, it's up to you whether you want to apply the shading first or the texture first. Um, a lot of times I will put in the structure of the grass, the texture first, and I do a, a general sweeping upward motion like this. Make sure you crisscross. Don't, um, don't make everything really parallel. Yes, Larry, this is the spoon shader. And um, kind of make it irregular let it flow from side to side. It can crisscross and kind of cross over. I also like to overlap. So we have um, some grass starting farther back and then some grass starting more forward and that'll help give us a little bit of, um, a little bit more depth. Okay, so this texture is better than that texture because we have overlap, but now let's add some shading into our texture and kind of make it a little softer. And you can do the same thing with the shading point with the uh, Walnut Hollow Creative Versatool. That's totally fine. Um, you can do this with a lot of points. So now that you see that we've added texture and shading, now our, our clump or singular clump of grass looks much better. Hi, Tracy. So when I do a field of grass, one thing that I'll want to do is I will kind of sporadically add these clumps and we can even go a little bit smaller here to maybe save time or to show how to do shorter grass. But I start with a clump and I put in the texture first I do a little bit of overlapping and then I 
move. I don't want to move kind of in um, straight lines. I don't want all my grass rows, uh, my grass clumps in rows or columns. So you want to kind of offset it just a bit. Now I'm going to do another tiny grass clump, mostly texture here. And then I'm going to move again in another kind of a random location. It's easy to get patterns in grass. Hi, Terry. And it's uh, harder even to hide patterns in grass. Like if it's a really even, like a checkerboard or rows and columns. Um, hi, Tracy. Um, no worries if you missed the first uh, few minutes. This, uh, the Q&A sessions stay on fa uh, YouTube. Sorry guys, it's been a really long day. Um, hi Beverly. Uh, the Q&A sessions are on YouTube and they live on YouTube. So these are just short kind of like snippet sections um, that you can watch whenever you get a chance. So. Okay, again, just really working on texture, little clumps. Now, me wanting to everything to be perfect, I would put a grass clump right there, but we can't do it. We have to make it a little bit irregular, okay? And just continue doing this as much as you can to create kind of a random um, pattern of clumps. Now you can go back in and add some more random clumps but a lot of times grass you'll see has little clumps. So do your best to kind of be random. A lot of times instead of working in a little area like this, I usually have a broad field of grass to burn. And so I'll put a clump in here and then I'll come clear over here and I'll do something different. I just wanna make sure it's not in line. And I'll come over here and do a clump and then I'll come down here and I'll do a clump. I think it helps to kind of break up the monotony of grass. And then, so let's add another one here. Again, just mostly texture. And you can see that I'm still operating at a level eight and it's much hotter. It seems the lines are much darker because I'm burning in shorter strokes instead of longer strokes. Tracy, you need grass, um, help with grass. Awesome, very good. Uh, Beverly, I agree. I, um, Beverly says it's great to uh, see the replays on YouTube, but it's nice to be around friends. And I agree. Uh, I think I would feel like I've missed out on something. So thanks everybody for being here tonight. Okay, so you get the idea of kind of a random grass pattern. Now I'm gonna turn the burner down, I think to like a seven, cause I'm working in such a small area here. Now we're going to want to add some uh, shading. So I find that I see more shading at the bottom of the clumps because it's um, a little bit more shady in there. It's darker. The sun doesn't get down there near as much. And you can do the same thing with larger clumps. Now, right now it looks not so good because we have these random chunky clumps. So we need to kind of blend everything together. But, and when I say blend everything together, we don't want really smooth, even, consistent shading. In this area, we're going to kind of add some random, um, some random strokes in here and there and kind of tie these clumps together like they look like they belong in a field. Now this is, this is a very small portrayal of a big grassy field. So keep in mind that you'll want to do this, but in a much more sporadic and larger um, kind of sense. So I'm adding a little bit of light texture in here, just kind of trying to blend everything together and tie it together. And then you can add some softer shading and just kind of buff things out and make it look a little bit softer. Now, this is for something like short grass, like you would see in a mowed lawn or um, a, a 
a more manicured field. If you have wild and crazy grass like this, you're gonna have those longer strokes. Ah, oh, Terry. Uh, Terry is saying you could have used this one when you were burning the Sheltie laying in the grass, the one that you had to start over. Yeah, um, grass is, is kind of crazy. Um, a lot of layers, lots and lots of layers. Make sure that you get both your texture and your shading combined to give it kind of a, a really well-rounded appearance. Now, if you see, I do have some bits of unburned wood in here. Leave those because that'll give um, some light into a subject, um, a subject that could get really flat and kind of uh, monotonous and boring. So unfinished pieces of wood sticking out is really helpful as well. Um, and then same thing, so, so we want to do kind of larger grass field. I did um, a live stream tutorial on an elephant and the elephant was standing in some tall grass. And so this is kind of the same thing that I did with that. Um, just make your strokes a little bit longer. Continue to space it out in clumps and offset everything that you can so it doesn't look like stamped, pattern stamped. That makes it look a little bit unnatural because normally you don't have grass in perfect uh, clumps like that. And tonight I'm using the, the razor tip just because it burns a little hotter and a little, little bit faster. You will notice that with the shading point on the Walnut Hollow Creative Versatool, it will burn, I think, a little bit softer. So your edges won't be as crisp unless you, um, unless you actually turn the burner upside down like this. Then you can get some of those really harsh edges, but even then it's it's going to be a little bit more softer than the razor tip. I will show you here in a minute a really fun technique that I love doing with the Versatool and the shading point. So we'll get to, back to that here in a minute. So you can also get really good uh, grass with the shading point. It might take a couple more passes to get that layer of dark towards the bottom but layering is king, so you gotta keep uh, layering. Hi Brandy, why did I choose a spoon shader um, tonight? Because it burns a little hotter than the Versatool that I usually use and the shading point, but um, it also has a dished um, features so that I can create, I can turn it upside down and create a real nice harsh texture or I can turn it the normal way and burn with the spoon side and get a real soft shaded um, texture. And so grass needs both texture and shading. I find that I like to add the texture before the shading, but uh, you, can, you can vary that up if you want. So again, with longer strokes, just go ahead and add those in and then we can shade them out, kind of blend them together a little bit with a softer approach. A lot of times also I will go back in and add kind of just some softer shading towards the bottom clumps of the grass. Kind of like that. So, <laughs> I really think that one of the biggest challenges with grass is that that constant repetitive motion. So if this this stroke here gets um, kind of tedious, keep those strokes, um, those upward strokes for the long pieces of grass. And then when it comes time to add more value and structure in there, do a back and forth motion towards the bottom. And sometimes I'll work in different, um, in different sections and I'll work on just clumps for a while and I'll sp space my clumps. And then for a while I work on adding a little bit of um, softer shading in there. And I just kind of mix and match and um, do your best to avoid repetitive 
motions. It's kind of tricky with grass, but that's why if you jump around in your picture, it helps a little bit. Um, Beverly, can you use the universal tip for the grass also? Um, I do believe so. I've used, um, hold on, I want to make sure I don't burn my, my camera cords here. So yes, I have burned um, grass with the universal point that comes with the VersaTool from Walnut Hollow. Um, and in that motion, uh, it'll take too long to turn it on, but you do the same thing and just do upward um, strokes with that. And then you can do some subtle shading with this as well. So yes, just because I'm using a certain point um, in the demo doesn't mean that there aren't other um, replacement points as well. So that's okay. Um, Larry, I do not have any more news on the Pro Point at this time. Um, they are in, uh, Walnut Hollow is in production, uh, not production, um, oh, where they make something and then work it out and send it back and that sort of thing. So, okay, let me show you a really fun and interesting grass texture thing that I love to create with the Versa tool from Walnut Hollow and the shading point. So sometimes when you're burning with this and you're trying to uh, burn grass, those really long strokes of grass, you can get. Sometimes it gets a little bit more tricky if you're going like across the grain, but one thing that's a lot of fun to get a really dark grass line very easily Hi, Dennis. Hi, 1967 girl. So um, if you take the shading point and you hold it sideways, and I'm gonna burn with the side of the heel. I usually use two hands like this and kind of control my, my hands. So if you set it down and then roll in one direction, or another, it gets a very crisp, um, much darker line than you can get with the tip. The, this line, using the side motion, also seems to be a little bit less wavery, and it indents the wood a little bit more. So by going like this, you can get some really fun, long pattern strokes. Um, and you can even add some texture in here like this, and a few longer pieces sticking out and you don't have to just use that one side, you can angle it over and use the other side. It takes a little bit of getting used to, depending on which stroke that you want, but it's a lot of fun and I think it makes grass go quite a bit faster. Um, so Tracy says, I did the mistake of semi rows. Can I fix it with making darker patches? Absolutely. So. I think that if you continue to add layers in a sporadic fashion, you can work through that, that grass. If it's in really even lines, um, like for example, let me go back to this really quick. If you have really even lines, let's come up here and say that you just, come on. I'm gonna turn it up to a nine so we can really go to town here. Um, if you have, you know, grass rows like this and then another grass row like that. Cause this is a very common mistake um, with all kinds of levels of artists as far as trying to block in, whether it's grass or backgrounds or anything in a consistent motion like that. Now you can see that I have those rows in there. You can pull down like some of the top rows into the bottom rows, some of the uh, bottom rows up into the mid rows, and you can wash that out basically with, um, everything's so dark right now, I hope you can see how it readjusts. Let me try it one more time here real quick. 
of, I'll space it out. Grass, 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 grass. Next layer, grass, 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 grass. One more. So if your grass looks like this, take the top row and pull it down, not consistently. So I'm just doing a little bit here and then I go up and then I come down a little bit more here and then I go up and then you do the same thing here in an irregular fashion, go up a little bit, come back down and you can basically wash that out. Now, if you were gonna try and wash that out, I would not do this consistent up and down motion make the washout a little bit more irregular and that will help as well. Um, yes, Larry, that's it, research and development. Terry, this is how I did, did, uh, did the grass and the elephant. Yes, it was longer grass, but this is basically the same thing. Um, okay, one other fun thing that I love with, uh, let's see, the Versatool. is because of the shape of the Versatool, how it dips in towards the tip, it creates almost like a little hollow. So if you were actually to rest this on the side, like that, well, that's a little bit much, but like that, see how there's a gap? So going back to this motion here, watch this. If you do that roll up motion and then hit the tip, roll and then up onto the tip like that it looks like seed heads like there's little seeds on the tips of the grass now I don't do it all the time I do it a little bit more sporadically but it's fun to take that and then roll it up kind of like that and it it gives just a little interesting kind of depth to your grass and then you know you just keep adding layers and adding layers and then um, you can do the shading in there to soften up the grass. Kind of like that. Now, if you don't like, or if you're afraid to kind of control that rolling motion and you have these long pieces of grass, especially ones that are kind of, it looks like they've been weighted over and they're heavy with seeds. So say we have something like that and it's rolled over and it looks heavy with seeds. You can take and just, you know, just draw in a little bit of pretend seed head there. So it's a fun, interesting little texture. Um, so the next thing that I want to show you guys is, so I'm going to go right up back into there. So say that you have a big patch of grass that you've burned or you have long pieces of light grass that you want to accentuate. Um, I can show you how to work on that. So this is basically positive space grass. It's much simpler than negative space grass. So negative space, think about it like I like to add in these, these um, wispy things and then create the illusion of a big thick piece of grass by kind of going like this and blocking it in and then you can, you can build structure around it and kind of shade behind it. So imagine it's like a cattail. Um, in the sunlight. You will have to burn negative space and burn around that. See what I'm saying? That is much, much more tricky. This is the easy way and this is the hard way as far as burning around everything. And you might notice that my my grass is a little bit chunky because I burned into it by accident you can kind of shave that down and make it smaller as you go to, to hide any of those mistakes. So a lot of times if you have um, big positive sections of grass, you can kind of outline them lightly, a little bit chunkier like that, and then wood burn around them and make them thinner as you go. 
Now, another way to create the illusion of these light sections of grass without having to tedi tediously burn around each one is to use a sharp tool to scratch out the grass. Personally, um, I have not had a, a lot of luck um, scratching grass out before I burn. Generally, I scratch the grass out after I've burned. Um, I use, this is just an awl, and it's made by Excel. And um, if, if you need something like this, or if you don't have one, let me put that in the link here. Here's a link for the all that I'm using tonight. Um, but I'm... In case that that might help you guys. So any kind of a sharp object would work. You can even um, use this to kind of clean up some of those areas that you may have accidentally burned over. Now normally I, I'm not a big advocate of scratching into the wood, but grass is a fun ex exception. Whiskers, you can do this a little bit as well. Anything that's really super fine may or may not work. But so like right in here, let's add maybe some short grass here in the front. So you're gonna wanna be a little bit aggressive with this and really dig in keep kind of an upward flicking motion and you can make it a little bit thicker. Like that, and then you can pull grass in. Um, Terry, yeah, this thing is like six bucks. So it's pretty darn handy. I use it for a number of things, but this is one of the, the main reasons that I use it for in wood burning. On the rare occasion, <laughs> Occasion that I make like a really bad mistake, I'll use this as well to fix it. But I don't dig into the wood quite like I am now. Because you can see that's pretty, that's pretty deep right there. And I'm going pretty fast, but you can even that out and make nice big wide sections of grass. Kind of like that. So if you find that your your big section of grass looks a little bit flat, you can add in little pieces and kind of lift out um, some lighter areas in there. So I hope you guys can see that there. So I've got one there and one there. It takes a little bit to kind of dig down to it, to, to where you'd like it. But we had some really good luck with this when we were burning elephant, the elephant with the big grass. And we were able to make some big sweeping grass pieces that turned out pretty cool. Kind of like that. So, um, a different, a couple different ways to go about grass. Um, as kind of a recap, I would suggest don't burn in rows. Um, combine your texture with your shading to get a nice overall effect. Kind of vary your strokes from one side to another. I tend to like to do clumps of grass and then intersperse them. They're usually a little bit darker at the bottom. You don't have to have all of them dark at the bottom. Try to avoid that rep really repetitive um, cookie cutter system. So uh, just, this is kind of a, a grass in a nutshell, but feel free to take a scrap piece of wood like I did and just experiment, play around. You can watch this video again and you can follow along and you can kind of create and recreate these different um, these different texture things that we were talking about and see what might work well for you. Same. Awesome. Thanks guys. Do we have any questions at this point as far as um, anything? This is a Q&A. I, I try to um, like 
have a topic so we don't just walk into this and just kind of I don't know don't really have a direction but we're I always like to open the the floor for questions towards the end and see what you guys have in mind so oh our weekly live stream is going to be Saturday this week once again and we are going to be burning a stained glass image which I'm very excited about this is going to be our image uh, it's a stained glass image of a flower and if you've noticed the reference photo uh, that I've sent out to patrons on patreon you get this it's printed out to the appropriate size we'll be working on this I think is seven and a half by nine and a half inches and if you want the same piece of wood the same um, shape and size that is also on um, amazon.com slash shop slash wood burning university and it's also in the description for the upcoming live stream so you can go to the upcoming live stream link and get that directly so you can work along with that with us this I am going to add color this is going to be a yellow flower with like blue and green uh, around the outside so really excited I've been wanting to do a stained glass image for the longest time and it'll be a lot of fun um, Dennis uh, you tried to order off the website with a discover card um, which website was that Dennis uh, was that Wood Burning University or Manisa Pyrography or the Amazon store? So I got like a few of them right now. But I don't know. Um, it could be a problem with uh, Discover Card. That's a good question. Um, Terry is asking, you can also use this technique for fur too. Yes. Um, fur doesn't have like this baseline like you see with grass. Um, and not all grass does have this baseline. It can kind of come down farther uh, and be really irregular. So, <coughs> excuse me, but yes, if you have um, fur that you want to lift up, you can lift pieces out or lighten areas up. Say I got this area too dark. You can scratch that and add more light into those areas. So yes, you can do this with fur as well. Um, and you could probably even like with this stuff up here let's see what we can do with this hey look at that we're lifting some of that charred stuff off so in your um, Terry the section that we where you had to redo because of the grass take this little knife this exacto blade uh, excel all is what it is and you can scratch in and add some pretty cool texture in here as well. So if you look at that and you kind of keep doing that, you could really lift off some of that. <laughs> you could lift off some of that, that charred stuff and lighten the area. And after you've kind of washed it out with more irregular shading, Go ahead and take this this lovely little knife here all and start lifting stuff out and you keep lifting and I bet you can use that test piece um, Terry as or that the piece that you had to you say did again use that as an opportunity to experiment and just see <coughs> see what you can come up with as far as ways to save that all right Thanks, Larry. Yeah, thanks, Lisa. I, there are so many patterns. Oh my gosh, I want to make all of them. They're so fun. The patterns on Wood Burning University, there. I want to create all of them. I have to just pick and choose. Same thing, but okay. Thanks, Tracy. Yeah, Terry, absolutely. Don't throw, don't throw that wood burning out. Completely play with it. Just see it as a, as a total opportunity for learning, and. See, look, we're really starting to pull some, um, some stuff out. This might become a really cool technique that you might like to try again on purpose. It'd be pretty cool. 
All right, guys. Well, um, I think we're kind of wrapped up for tonight. Thank you all for being here um, on our episode two of our Q&A sessions. And feel free to add questions there or send me a message. Um, we could go admin at woodburninguniversity.com and see what questions we'll do next. All right, guys. We'll see you Saturday. Thanks, guys. Take care.